Let me tell you, gentlemen, in a few years, GFAM and the bros are not going to do it for you. You are going to want to have families. You are going to want to have children. You are going to want to have a life. And I can tell you what this court has seen time after time with young men like you. You start off and you're heroes in jail and you've got your mates and you've got your college and you've got your bros, your college of learning as they sometimes call the jail, and you've got your bros. And then you get out of jail and you're in the big wide world and you see your brothers and sisters settle down and have jobs and families. But you can't do it. You, for, you go back on the gear because all you've got is your mates from jail. And then as time goes on, you'll have a few relationships. You'll have a relationship here, a relationship there. You'll have six kids by six different mothers. And if you're still using, you'll probably assault them. They'll be kids you never see. You'll burn off your brothers and sisters who'll get sick of you. And the only ones who care for you are your, are your parents. And when you're 40, you see what GFAM and the bros do for you. You've had, never had a job, never had a stable relationship, no relationships with the children that you have. You will end up drug-rattled, lonely old men. And, you know, I see both of you. You may think you are heroes standing up for GFAM the way you reckon you did on this occasion. I don't care if it's... Mis the only reason you are getting any attention is because it was Tony Mockbell. But at the end of the day, you two young blokes, two on one, mauled and maimed a 53-year-old man. That's what you did. And Mr Bennett, I don't know what happened with you. Four years ago, you were finishing year 12. You did not have a stain on your character. Four years later, armed robber, ice addict, and now, this cowardly attack on a much older man, that's you. Where has this happened? And you will not talk about your background. I don't know what's gone on with you. I don't accept that ICE has just done it. There's something else you're not talking about. Now, I know you're only 21 and 22. I know you're probably sitting there thinking, what would she know? I'm just hoping one day what I say will actually penetrate. The courts have seen the future that I have outlined for you with hundreds of young men. Hundreds. It's like a sad, repetitive story. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's, all, it's one of the reasons, and your offending was simply too dangerous. Courts do not like putting young men into jail because they are vulnerable to the negative inf uh, influences of our adult prison. But sometimes offending by young men like you is so dangerous, and I accept that that was the case in both of you, you have to be put in adult prison. Now, in the time that you have left to you, and you're going to have a few more years, you watch, you have a chat to the older prisoners that you'll be knocking around with. You find out what sort of family relationships you've got. You find out what sort of relationships they've got with their kids. You find out how happy they are when they get out. You have a think about what your life's going to be. In any event, I'm saying that to you because you're both so young. And you may think you're heroes within the jail, but do you think in 20 years' time that's going to matter? When you're out on the street desperately trying uh, to score and nowhere to live and nowhere to sleep because everyone's sick of you, because you've burned everyone off and all your GFAM brains are scattered dead or in jail somewhere, that's what it's going to be. And you've both got good families. As I... So I've departed from script. <laughs>